Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you very much for joining the Monks podcast today. It's been a great uh, aspiration for me to have your august presence here. And I'm very grateful that you could spare the time today. You're welcome. Thank you, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, on this podcast, we usually try to discuss topics which go deeper into our issues relevant to devotees and aspiring devotees. So today, since, since my first encounter with you, I was born and brought up in Maharashtra and almost all the devotees I met. We had many encounters in the past, maybe this is after <laughs> yes, Maharaj. a break. Yes, Maharaj. So, so you are among the first, so I met many devotees uh, when I was introduced to Krishna consciousness, but you were the first uh, uh, first uh, ISKCON devotee leader who was not only from a Maharashtrian background, but you also brought your uh, Maharashtrian bhakti into your Krishna consciousness. So I grew up in a devotional, more religious than devotional family, but we used to have Manate Shlok and other regional bhakti songs and bhakti verses being recited. So since that time, I was fascinated about how now, Gaudiya Bhakti and Maharashtrian Bhakti, how they can come together. And so broadly, what aspects of Bhakti are universal? What are regional? So I thought we could talk about that topic today. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. So firstly, Maharaj, when you were among the, I think the first, among the first few Indian disciples of Srila Prabhupada, or first few Indians who really became dedicated followers of Srila Prabhupada. At that time, mostly it was people became life members, but not really disciples. So, but now we see that a lot, in fact, India is the powerhouse of the Krishna consciousness movement. There are more Indians, more Indian devotees, more temples, more books distributed. So what do you feel is the reason for this evolution? Why were, say, Indians more reluctant at that time and now that may be more open, more receptive. Yeah. During Prabhupada days, uh, as you rightly pointed out, we did have lots of hundreds or maybe several thousand Thai patron members, but uh, talking of uh, being a follower and of being a disciple, there were uh, maybe uh, only a dozen or so uh, stepped forward to become devotees and uh, followers of Krishna consciousness movement. Well, I'm talking about Mumbai, where I was, I had joined, and uh, that is where I was practicing my Krishna consciousness. And uh, probably I, I was, uh, well, could be. As a college student, I joined joining ISKCON. Oh, amazing. <laughs> in, in so we are all inheriting, those of us who are college preachers, we have all inherited your legacy, Maharaj, then. Uh, and now we have Prerna Festival in Mumbai and other places, and uh, thousands are... Yeah, yeah so uh, those days they were saying, oh, yeah, when I become old, I will take to Krishna consciousness, or... But uh, that is no more. Uh, so the congregation is, we have thousands of followers, disciples of Gopal Krishna Maharaj, Radha Nath Swami Maharaj, some of them are my disciples. And uh, so, uh, well, Jai Pataka Maharaj also a lot. In Jai Pataka Maharaj. And uh, of course, we are talking about Maharashtra and Mumbai, yeah, but yeah, yeah, as a whole. Yeah. India. It's, it's gone world in India also there. So, uh, well, I, I think uh, Indians were still busy doing imitation of the West. Mm -hmm. And they had so much faith in science and technology. Mm -hmm. But gradually they were uh, seeing that uh, Science and technology was not keeping the promises, not delivering the goods. And it, it takes some time, right? Uh, 
action and then for a reaction it takes some time so people were uh, into enjoying spirit but then soon <clears throat> their troubles were there the uh, the global warming and uh, ecological disasters and uh, the pandemic is here and this and that and more violence and more divorces and what not. Uh, but I, I, this is my yes. observation that uh, uh, Indians uh, uh, have taken they took note of this and uh, they were, I think they were trying some alternative, okay. alternative to Krishna consciousness or religion and uh, devotion. But uh, that did not work out, wasn't working out. So uh, hmm. prevention is better than cure. So some kicked that out, they, they discarded that and they are back on the tracker. Yes. Back on the yeah, and practicing culture and and their religion. Uh, I I think this is uh, this is one observation why yeah why they are uh, turning up in big numbers from congregation. They are joining, and youths are coming forward also to become full time devotees. And propagators of Krishna consciousness. Yes, Maharaj. To some extent, from whatever I have read, it did seem that the life members who came, they were, thank you for that answer, the life members also were more into like a cultural national pride. And all these Amer Americans and Europeans have become our, are following our culture. So it was more of curiosity and pride rather than a personal involvement and commitment. But as you rightly said, as the promises of materialism and technology didn't fulfill, and I think then after a certain level of prosperity also came, and then people started looking more for spirituality, and then we were a viable option. Yeah, I also would say that, uh, you know, uh, Prabhupada preached uh, to the Americans, Westerners, and and in fact, while I was in college in early 70s, and Prabhupada came with a bunch of his followers from America and Europe and other parts of the world. And they were advertising the Hare Krishna festival in Bombay as the American sadhus are here, the European sadhus are here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Prabhupada, uh, you know, he, he had envisioned this and he, he wanted to, uh, okay, you want to uh, follow uh, Westerners, Americans, then follow those Americans, those who have become the Hare Krishna devotees or devotees of Krishna. You are trying to follow their culture and uh, Western culture and uh, they are Westerners' faith in technology and uh, uh, science. But you see, look at the Westerners. They are kicking that out, discarding that, and uh, they are becoming devotees. You fool Indians, wake up. Go back to your culture and Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada was kind of dangling those Americans. Look, look at this American. This is... So they became, they did not become happy. They became uh, well hippies. <laughs> yeah. By the, the progress, so-called progress of the materialism and being a modern and uh, mm. uh, so they were not they were not happy. Yeah. So you also would not be happy if you follow in their footsteps. Mm. So I think this was an eye opener for. Indians, yes, Maharaj. and uh, I think people started thinking twice. Yes, Maharaj, that's true. As compared to say our movement in the 1970s, and as I say now we have 2020 almost. So, do you see ISKCON in in India has become say more Indianized in some ways, 
and that's why indians say feel more at home so mm -hmm. in i uh, <laughs> well there were days angres kamandiri and in uh, vrindavan in vrindavan or uh, you know and uh, in the, the western followers are uh, see these are cis these are cis be aware stay away from them <laughs> so that was kind of propaganda or they came to do business in the past and gradually they conquered india and they made us slaves and now they are coming in guise of sadhus but they have the same intention that they had previously uh, oh. so we are so uh, so that was there uh, yes maharaj you were talking and there's a so maharaj was really us so talking of that uh, mm. you know i have heard about this accusation of <laughs> devotees being cia so was there somebody particularly doing this or it was just because of the political tension between india and pakistan and america siding supporting pakistan was it because of that just geopolitics or was it say some people yeah, were like i could quickly say that they just did not want to practice their own culture and religion oh okay and uh, so this was their excuse oh okay. they did not follow uh, follow the uh, american sadhus or european sadhus yes <laughs> they were not following indian sadhus or indian saints and shastras now americans were coming and so they were not into into okay practicing so i, I think this was mm. some propaganda so that they don't have to follow okay. that makes sense Their, so maharaj when you Uh, were introduced to Krishna consciousness. Now you, uh, from you came from a Maharashtrian bhakti background. So, what was your experience? Did you find any significant differences or similarities? What was it that maybe attracted you? Did anything, did anything cause you hesitation when you were introduced to Krishna consciousness? No, <laughs> it was. I mean, I was I was looking for Krishna consciousness, or my soul was very much longing. And uh, when I came in contact with these Hare Krishna sadhus, <laughs> European sadhus, as they were being advertised during that Hare Krishna festival. and of course you know but also was there hmm. i i was you know i i i found what i was looking for and i did not think twice that they being different or whether or not to go for it i i was this uh, oh right right in the middle and of course you know i had i had doing bhajans or kirtans or listening to bhajans kirtans parama bhangas uh, during my childhood days and i was into some bhajan kirtan so when i heard and saw the devotees of the hari krishna devotees at cross maidan near church gate on the stage chanting and dancing and drumming and playing and symbols so for that was propa says especially talks about the varkaris in maharashtra they they are kirtan mandalis and gaudiya kirtan mandals is very much similar he says they also use mridang mridang and kartal and that is also our instrument they also dance and chant while chanting and we do the same thing so i i i did not i thought they were i felt at home and uh, i i took that uh, i took away uh, from that festival is chanting and dancing and then soon 
where I was residing in Dadar, <laughs> in my room with my villagers. They were my roommates. So whenever they were all out, uh, and I would lock the, the doors, close the windows, curtains, and just to oh, no. imitate those Hare Krishna American Western sadhus and chant and dance dance my, myself. So uh, I, I found what I was looking for. So amazing, I was very happy, oh, amazing. Yes, Maharaj. Mm, that's remarkable. So, in one sense, your spiritual search enabled you to transcend whatever cultural differences might have been there, and you focus on the cultural similarities. You know, I have some, I, I had some friends who, when I was studying engineering, so I got introduced to Bhakti in third year of my engineering, that was about 25 years ago. And then there, there were some friends also who were from a Varkari background, they were also studying engineering. I used to invite them for a program. They said that this is already a part of our culture. We will follow our culture. We don't want to follow this. But then what I noticed is that they would actually not really follow their culture also. So sometimes the, sometimes the regional cultural conceptions can come in the way of people taking up to bhakti. So do you feel that in Maharashtra, we are seen as... A, say like a Bengali bhakti tradition or because of our temples and our kirtans, we are now more and more we accepted as a, as a viable bhakti tradition to be practiced here also. I think that bhakti is a, is a bhakti. <laughs> bhakti is an activity or a symptom of a, of a soul expression of soul's devotion that is that is bhakti in maharashtra there is a saying usa donga pari raso nohe donga the sugar cane maybe you know straight one or bent one or like that one uh, the rest the juice inside that sugar cane uh, regardless of the shape and size, and uh, uh, it is the same. It's, so, it's a uh, metaphor, beautiful. I mean, we we do as we uh, are born and brought up in different ge geographical locations and under different cultural uh, uh, prevailing backgrounds. Well, we do uh, pick up those and. Uh, that also becomes a designation or imposition on the soul's pure devotion and, and bhakti and uh, on conditioning like that. So, you know, in, in Maharashtra, they would say, hey, you, you should be bhakta like a pundalik. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he was taking care of his family. Uh, serving parents, uh, even he made God to wait. Hmm? So in, in Maharashtra, that kind of culture or language is a commonly spoken by all, all the parents. So, uh, but that's, that's just uh, not the original culture that is practiced in spiritual world or which, which Gauranga Mahaprabhu appeared to propagate the, the right culture, the eternal culture and devotional and devotional activities down to the earth right here on this planet. And, and fortunately, he, Mahaprabhu came to Kolapur and Pandarpur and Nasik and he passed through Satara and uh, he chanted and danced and, uh, well, full devotion, full devotion, dedication. So I think Ani Jagate Sikha Acharya says, by his example, 
Mahaprabhu himself has taught. He, he became Mahatma or Sant, uh, Acharya. Bhagavan, Sri Krishna Chaitanya becomes Sant, Mahatma, Acharya, Gaur Bhakta. And he practices Krishna consciousness. So I think that's a glaring example. And then our tradition, Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, our Acharyas are, that is what they are practicing and propagating and that was delivered by, by Srila Prabhupada. And uh, eventually it is expectation and prediction of faith in Mahaprabhu that this would become a global culture, global phenomenon, you know, practices of Krishna consciousness. Uh, so transcending, you know, the regional cultures. So oh, this is a Maharashtrian culture. This is a Bengali culture. This is North Indian culture. This is uh, maybe South American culture. This is a uh, African culture, even religious culture. Or, you know, this is going to be. Transcending. That's why we, a lot of time we say, you know, we, but we, we are not, uh, the, uh, Krishna consciousness is not one more religion. You know, there are this religion and that religion, and Hindu and this and that. So uh, the uh, Krishna consciousness movement cannot be just added to that list. And this is another religion, another our soul, yeah, this is beyond and transcendental. We are not part of that dual <laughs> duality. We are above and beyond mm -hmm. and matchless and not be compared to anything that exists around here. That's profound. You know, what you said, Maharaj, just now Bhakti you know, Thakur talks about this also in Chetan Shikshamrut, that Bhakti is a universal emotion. And then he says that there are regional expressions, he says, according to culture, language, place, time, the saints have taught it in different ways. And uh, so what you're saying is that the universal aspect of Bhakti will appeal to everyone irrespective of whatever their cultural background is. And if somebody holds on to their cultural background too much, then that is like a designation, which will, which is basically covering the soul. And it, it, that may obstruct them on their spiritual journey. Yeah, like, you know, I don't know, yes, another question, uh, just to talk a little more about what we are talking is, yes, Marge, please. that, uh, yeah, in 1971, I remember some Indian, Hindu Indian, uh, talking to American Sadhu, Hare Krishna devotees. Uh, why did you, you were Christian, why did you change your religion and now you have become, become Hindu? And the devotee gave a pretty smart answer. He said, no, no, no. I haven't become Hindu. He, in fact, he said, I have become better Christian. Mm -hmm. And he explained, I explained saying, you know, the Bible says, love thy Lord with all thy heart, all thy strength. Mm. And, uh, but I did not uh, do that before. I did not put my heart into what I was doing for Jesus or for or Jehovah, mm. uh, but now I'm I'm doing that in Krishna consciousness. I'm that is what I'm doing. That is what I'm trying to do with all my heart, with all my strength. I'm loving and serving my Lord. And unfortunately, I did not even know who that Lord was before. But now, now I know that Lord is Krishna or Rama. He has many names. Okay, Allah. So why not? And I, I'm. So, not that I have been converted and I have become now another, belonging to another religion. But uh, so, I think this is 
So but one who like, becomes Krishna conscious, he becomes better, better, you know, better Hindu, <laughs> better Christian, better Muslim, better this or that. This is the best about oh, all other oh. ordinary stuff. Yes, Maharaj. That's a very vivid example. So if we can say, if somebody can say that I'll become a better Christian by practicing Krishna Bhakti, then certainly we can say that I, they will become, if they are a Varkari, they will actually become a better Varkari by practicing Krishna consciousness. They'll become a better follower of Tukaram Maharaj also. So you mentioned how Krishna exactly. consciousness, yes, thank you. You mentioned how Krishna consciousness uh, cannot be added to the list of the various world religions. So now people will see us like that. They will see us as belonging to a particular religious group or a particular organization. So is it primarily by our, by our philosophical explanations that we help them see that you know, we, are, we are not like just another cultural group or another religious group? Because practically speaking, we dress in a particular way. We chant particular mantras. So the aspect of uh, ethnic or regional uh, regional expressions of bhakti is there with us also. Uh, the, this could also be listed for uh, this kind of dress or this kind of color of the dress or this kind of tilak or this kind of whatever. But uh, the bhakti is you know beyond that one also. Mm -hmm. These are gone, gone lakshan. These are secondary symptoms of religion or religious person or God conscious person. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the, the, the architect and design of place of your worship, mosque is this way and the church is that way and, uh, you know, temple is that way. Uh, these are external things yes, uh, and the world pays attention to more differences or externalities uh, but we should be going deeper within uh, beyond these external forms and looks and colors and the caste and nationality and even gender and uh, so Krishna consciousness is uh, transcendental to uh, all, all, all that. Yes. Uh, so by seeing these things, they could recognize, acknowledge this as superior or transcendental or beyond all, all that exists in different name of different religions. Yes, Maharaj. So Maharaj, you have been, uh, apart from preaching all over the world, you have also focused a lot on Maharashtra. So over the, say, five deca decades or so where our movement has been here, uh, what do you see as the major achievements or landmarks in our outreach in Maharashtra? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> there are... Maharashtra, early days or Shilpa days, we were were limited to Mumbai only. Yes. Jew, Hare Krishna land only. And then we just started, I remember in 1975, Shilpa sent me and Bhagavad Das and others to Pune to preach. Of course, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think of Maharashtra, but yeah, there are a few places. Uh, there was Vrindavan. Uh, Vrindavan land, Bhumi Puja and Juhu Bhumi Puja and Mayapur Bhumi Puja took place within a span of just a few months in 1972. So those were the temples uh, in, in India, about half a dozen during Prabhupada days and in in Maharashtra, it was just basically Mumbai. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, from then till now, 
all that you see hmm. all, all the manifestations all the now we have i mean 50 or so big and small locations where krishna consciousness is practice we have we have temples everywhere and uh, okay i mean i <laughs> yes I was, i was one maharaj priyan to join in the in the beginning and then uh, i remember prabhupad saying to me one day we just myself and prabhupad were in the room prabhupad saying we we want more men like you and now i could see there are so many hundreds and hundreds of devotees men women also in in maharashtra Mm. practicing and propagating krishna consciousness so this is all uh, these are all landmarks yes maharaj and the, the 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 book distribution number of bhagavad gitas that we have distributed in maharashtra is a big number i think amongst the indian language bhagavad gita as it is in indian language Marathi is ranking you know uh, high if not the highest oh okay That's and nice. you know one had distributed 400000 bhagavad gita just last month and yeah i heard previous year did the same thing and jo bombay had been distributing books like uh, crazy uh, all over so uh, so that has uh, all these dimensions have been added and uh, yes ma'am and uh, there are so many festivals of the yatras held and uh, now we are part of the maharashtra dindi workers <laughs> we join them and uh, we we are there so we we are everywhere when there's a nasik kumbh mela there's a hari krishna camp is there and uh, we have big names in in mumbai we have many temples yes maharaj used to have just jew and then kel party and uh, in mira road and now kargar is a huge thing and then we have a lower than eco village Yes, Maharaj. That's a big, uh, big thing, <laughs> and uh, and we have Pandarpur here. Yes, Maharaj. I was going to ask you, yeah. Pandarpur. I think this is among the few temples that where there is already a holy dham in Maharashtra, and we have also uh, quite a pr- significant presence there. So, uh, uh, are we now? Did we have some? Is it like in Jagannath Puri? There are some uh, some anxieties among the local devotees about Iskcon's presence there. So was there some anxiety over there, or we were naturally accepted, and now we are seen as a part of the Pandarpur holy landscape? Yeah, I mean our <laughs> our neighbor or some land dispute and encroachment. <laughs> There is some harassment. Harassment is there. Yeah, but uh, that is but otherwise, you know, we are mm. we are accepted, embraced, mm. and we are integral part of. Uh, okay, when you know when our padyatra uh, from Mayapur to no from Dwarka to Mayapur padyatra. passing through maharashtra and coming to pandarpur uh, this is of course all the time but uh, the over greeted our party was greeted by the officials of rukmini vital rukmini temple authorities and pandas and uh, oh okay and not only that we uh, we had devotees from some Only different nations walking with us, 
and we all had the opportunity to do maha abhishek of vital uh, pandora oh amazing yeah so we had some africans and americans and uh, germans and uh, they're all bathing and you know mm -hmm. massaging the body of uh, vital and uh, jagannath puri <laughs> you cannot do it so this was a look at, year. look at the temple with the side long glass you will be immediately caught and sent away for year that's that's not the oh, case wow. so this happens every year or this happened in a particular year you are saying this all oh, well, i'm just uh, saying it it happened one time okay in 84 Oh. But uh, uh, but otherwise also you know otherwise also whenever our devotees come from distant countries we we do bring them to uh, the Kakad Arati Mangal Arati of uh, of uh, Pandoran Vitala and uh, this is very something very special about uh, the Abhishek and uh, Arati. especially a bishek i would say uh, uh, there's no curtain uh, yeah I've... you get to see lord being open up and uttishta uh, uttishta govinda trilokya mangalam kuru and then uh, for arati and dress him and bathe him so uh, we always have devotees whether jay pataka maharaj or giriraj maharaj or so many maharajas they always come here or they were is from all over the world mm. and uh, so they get to sit just you know, just few feet away from the deity and watch and have darshan to their hearts content and uh, so uh, there is no uh, discrimination of that sort in in pandurpur that's amazing So Maharaj, when you said eighty-four itself, that means we got acceptance uh, very early. So our movement was not even that big in eighty-four. Now we are much bigger. So I presume your presence must also have played a significant role, that because you are a Maharashtrian and then you acted like a segue, like a bridge between the movement and the local bhakti bhakti leaders or bhakti teachers over the bhakti culture over there. very very <laughs> thank you <laughs> so so that means you really literally are the pioneer of our of krishna consciousness in the in pandarpur so maharaj were you the first maharashtrian to be introduced to krishna consciousness say that again were you the first maharashtrian to be introduced to krishna consciousness well <laughs> 71 was March April was the first festival held Hare Krishna festival and of course talking about being introduced there were thousands in attendance <laughs> I mean somebody who became committed was in the, the middle first of them this one speck of dust or okay. part of there no but I meant but but and, and of course Radhanath Maharaj also was in the audience there Mm. No, I meant that the from first Maharaj, yeah, from America. So, yeah. But I, I, I think I was, uh, yeah, I, I started practicing Krishna consciousness. Yes. So following so, the Pandal program. Oh. Uh, so both from the historical perspective, you are the first Maharashtrian to become a follower of committed follower of Prabhupada, and then you pioneered bhakti also in Maharashtra. it's uh, amazing well prabhupad asked me to uh, do that i received a letter from sri prabhupad in uh, uh, 77 i already had been preaching in maharashtra hmm uh that i had been going to my own village also once a year with hari krishna devotees and whole festival hmm So uh, after 
one such festival in 77. Uh, and also I was doing uh, traveling and preaching, book distribution, hmm. all over Maharashtra, all over India, all over Maharashtra. Then Prabhupada wrote to me in 77 saying, whole of India and specifically your Maharashtra are enthused with Krishna. Oh. Now you have to revive their Krishna consciousness. This is Tukaram's country. But now they are becoming bad politicians. Bad politicians, okay. So revive them by the process of the Sankirtan movement. Oh. And in the same letter towards the end, Prabhupada wrote saying, organize very solidly and thus increase the number of books distributed the numbers of devotees made and develop centers of Krishna consciousness everywhere. Oh. So this is a direct instruction of Srila Prabhupada. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, so in a sense, Maharashtra is like a Guru Datta Desh. What Prabhupada gave you. Yes, ma'am. That is one of the Guru Datta Deshes. <laughs> yeah, yes, one of the, of course. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. Mm. So, I also remember that in the Kumbh Mela now, you have also been like recognized as one of the sadhus by the traditional Akhadas. Can you, or a traditional authority? They call, they call Mahans. 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 So, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Or uh, That is, I think, a special honor for our movement and that's also recognition uh, of how people are recognizing Srila Prabhupada's followers as authentic. Mm. Yeah, so it took a long time. So Srila Prabhupada attended 71 Kamamela with his followers, and so he did also in 77. In 77 Kamamela, Prayag, Ribbani Sangam, Kamamela, I was also there. <laughs> Then we had been participating in uh, Kamba Mela's. Iskan was participating practically every Kamba Mela. But uh, because we, again, that yeah, some understanding, misunderstanding was still prevailing, the, these are. Uh, is a Western movement and American sadhus and Mlechas are part of, uh, I know their, their members are Mlechas or Shudras or Yavanas. So uh, they cannot uh, be integrated into uh, the Kambamela team or uh, give them honor of joining that uh, procession that goes to take baths at Triveni Sangam and other places at Shipra and Ujjain and Godavari in Nasik and Ganga in Haridwar. So, uh, so it took quite some time for con convincing them or clearing their misunderstanding that this is, this is not a Western organization. Western others' uh, predominance. This is uh, okay, it's so like that. So, gradually, after long, many years in uh, Ujjain Kamba Mela, some dozen years ago, hmm. uh, or, or, or Dina Bandhu, in fact, <laughs> our American. Yeah, Sadhu, Dina Bandhu and Sarovam Prabhu. Two of them were working on his Kambamela authorities, big, big Mahans that they have committee. Hmm. Uh, they 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 are the ones they uh, recognize different parties and accept them into the fold and acknowledge them as official uh, 
institutions, Mahans. So that finally happened, and then I was oh. asked by our, our leadership in India to take up that role. And uh, so this is how oh, okay. I became part of the Mamela. It's amazing. So when Prabhupada was there at that time, even he was not recognized as a uh, as a Mahant at that time. He was a prominent presence in the Kumbh Mela, as, as, from what I read. Lots of people came and saw him and were impressed. Yeah, uh, that, that's that you could, anybody could do. But when there's a procession on the uh, snan snan days, Makar Sankranti snan and this snan and that snan. Okay. Now okay. there is a the Grand Trunk Road or a path mm. leading to the bathing heart, and there only those who are authorized, recognized as officially recognized as Mahans, they they are allowed to. Then there are thousands or millions watching and taking darshan and from. Naga Babas and you, there are so many, many parts. So, uh, so Prabhupada was there, but uh, I think that was not even tried to become Mahantar. Uh, so hmm. these developments took after Prabhupada's. Yes, Maharaj. So you were, uh, so the Mahant specifically appointed you as a representative of Scon or you as an individual? How does this? No, I am representing ISKCON, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Oh, okay. Yes, Maharaj, amazing. And uh, going back to your earlier point about how even our American Western non-Indian devotees are allowed intimate darshan and massaging of Lord Vithal. So, is this uh, is this like inclusiveness characteristic of most temples in Maharashtra? And is like Jagannath temple more a exception or it's more of a, the norm is openness or it varies very much from temple to temple? I think in general, and as we uh, walk from Dwarka through Gujarat, through Maharashtra, through Karnataka, and then to Kerala and Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and Jagannath, uh, Mayapur. Uh, I think Jagannath Puri was uh, the worst experience. So that's where the opposition and uh, some tradition, you know, from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu days. That's why even Namachari Haridas Thakur did not enter, and neither he was not. Yeah, you stayed away, and others also stayed away. Mm. So, uh, I think in general, uh, we were welcomed. I mean, even in South India, many temples have signed. Uh, only Hindus are allowed. But even there, the Hare Krishna Padayatris were, were allowed to enter. The Western, Western Hare Krishna Padayatris were allowed to enter. Uh, I think the Dakor uh, Makonchi and Dakor in Gujarat, the Dakor Dham, they are also, at least those days, uh, they were not allowing Westerners. I remember one time we we had one of my god brother, Dinanath, he's from America, but it's black bodied. Uh, mm -hmm. So we were. Uh, yeah, so there were several of us, and we asked him to be in the middle. And uh, mm. and uh, we had told him, if anyone tries to talk to you, who we'll tell them? He's observing mount today. He's observing silence. <laughs> so, you know, that worked. He, he was able to take darshan. If he was a white body, probably, Dakar Temple, they would not have a lot of darshan. 
So uh, in general, we welcome most of the temples, but uh, I would say in Pandarpur, we had a very special and very intimate uh, darshan and association and service of the deities. Now, I'm sure Sri, Sri Sampradai temples, they would not have allowed us to come and bathe their deities. Darshan, you could, could bathe. There was no question of us and what we think of Westerners uh, doing Archana. But here, wonderful, we had a privilege. Oh. So is it also because, say, the Maharashtrian Bhakti was, uh, the Bhakti tradition itself was rejuvenated by many saints who were most of them from what is conventionally called, considered the lower castes. So because of that, the discrimination is much lesser in Maharashtra. Yes, whatever the this historical or hmm. the reasons are there. Uh, yeah, but that could be reasons. Yes, Maharaj. Famous uh, devotees of Pandoram, hmm? some were farmers or some were cobblers, some were bikers, potters, or you know, from all castes and creeds. And, but uh, no, Vaishnava Jati Bhatti, Guru Naramati, Archo Vishnu Siladhir, to consider all this is this opening the gate of the hell to, to think that this person, you know, belongs to such a jati or caste and uh, or uh, guru is just ordinary, just another human being and the uh, deity is just, just a stone. So uh, I think here uh, the Lord and Lord's devotees are kind and then they, everyone is welcome. And we, uh, Tumaza le Kura Bada Sange Gopada Samira. We see a photograph of Pandurang Vital. He's carrying all sorts of devotees coming from all different backgrounds and so called castes and Varnas and Ashrams. And some is, you know, they are on. A shoulder, uh, and someone is holding with his hand and bringing them along, or uh, they are sitting all over him and carrying them. So that's that's Lord. That is Lord wherever he is, uh, in Jagannath Puri or South India or Pandarpur. Uh, that's a Lord. That's a very intimate image of the Lord. It's almost like Krishna and Vrindavan where he carries the gopas. We don't have such an intimate image of, say, for example, Lord Ram he carrying his associates or Lord Vishnu, definitely not. So can you talk something about the similarities between, say, Lord Vithal and Lord Krishna, the way he is worshipped or the way he has been uh, conceived by the saints? Well, officially, you could say Lord Vital is, uh, is Dwarkadish. Yes. But here, you know, he, the deities, Leelas are like Lord of Vrindavan. Oh. Like, while he's, when they begin, he's Abhishek. And the Lord remember, oh, where is my butter? Oh, where is my butter? And they stop bathing him. And then Lonya Sagoda, they bring big uh, hmm, the ball of butter and they, they, they feed him. So Makanchor. So which which Lord or Lord who eats butter is is Krishna. Krishna in Vrindavan specifically. I'm sure, I'm sure Ram also eats some butter and that's why everyone eats. <laughs> no one eats. 
and loves butter like Krishna does. So, yeah. or Pandurang Vital in Pandurpur, he has that very special affection for butter. So that that's a, that's a one proof. And there's a there's a Radharani, you know. So this is what we have. We are bringing it to the notice of Varkaris and Maharashtrians uh, that, uh, okay, I mean, this is, is a Pandarpur and there's also Goparpur. So Goparpur is Vrindavan. And if you visit Goparpur, you will see like a visiting Gokul in Vrindavan. All darshans are like that, pastimes are like that. There's also Vishnu Pad near Goparpur, right on the bank of Chandrabhaga. And you see the footprints of Sri Krishna and footprints of the calf and the cow and the flute. So that, that is Krishna. That is very much Krishna. And this, uh, so I, I have done some, some research uh, with the help of or in consultation of uh, scholars and going through libraries and scriptures that uh, what they call Go, Go, Goparpur. Goparpur is on the top of a hill and that hill is Govardhan. Oh, amazing. And there's a, there's a river flowing and there's a there's a Jamuna, there's a there's a Chandra Bhaga and Jamuna confluence oh. here. So uh, and 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 so along with uh, in a Rukmini, this is Vital Rukmini temple. That uh, uh, there's a Rukmini, there's a Satya Bhama, there's a there's a Radharani also. Oh, in uh, Next to uh, next to Rukmini, you take darshan of Rukmini, come outside, and next darshan is Radharani darshan. Hmm. So, uh, so Vital is Lord of Radha, that is Lord of Vrindavan, Brajendranandan, Sri Krishna. Hmm. So uh, he is Dharkadish, he is also. Rajabhasi, Vrindavan, Vasi, Krishna. Mm. And so we want to bring this to the notice uh, of the workers and, and everywhere, everyone. The Prabhupada wanted me to preach in Maharashtra also and revive their Krishna consciousness by the process of Sankirtan. Mm. So uh, I, I thought of writing a book Prabhupada was asked to preach in the West, so Prabhupada thought I, I will have some books translated in in English language, then I could preach. So I, I also did something similar upon arrival here in Pandarpur. We, we have come up with this book called Bhuvai Kunt. Hmm. And we are trying to uh, share these mysteries of Pandarpur and uh, unfold the different dimensions. Yes, Maharaj. So that, that's our role. Yes, Maharaj. It's a beautiful book. And we will put in the information about the book in this podcast also when we're talking about it. So, so Maharaj, going back to your point about uh, you doing research to... Uh, show how Krishna is very much there in Pandarpur also. So it's almost like, say, Lord Chaitanya is a channa avatar of Krishna and the devotees actually highlight how he is the Lord. So it's almost like Lord Krishna is, or Krishna's Vrindavan, or Krishna, the mood of Krishna and Vrindavan is there in Pandarpur, but now in the Gaudiya tradition, you are bringing it to, bringing it to light. Well, I'm not the first one. I'm mean, uh, the previous saint, saint special to Karam and others also. All 
many, many of their abhangas, the compositions, they talk of it all as a, as a, as a Sri Krishna or... Yes, of course. In general, within the poetic compositions, the compositions are quite syncretic. Like even when the, uh, Balaji is being worshipped, he'll be referred to as Ram and Krishna. So I think poetic compositions have always been syncretic. Uh, the different manifestations are worshipped together. But specifically the local places as being associated with particular forms of the Lord, uh, I think that is, a, that is something which is uh, maybe not so highlighted. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. And uh, yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, as Krishna has appeared in Gokul, and everyone is Sukhi, very happy in, in Vrindavan, uh, like that. Yes. Govinda Govinda Mana Lagaliya Chanda. So you you name it, there are thousands of Yes, yes Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. The talk of uh, uh, yeah, we tell less as Dwarka Dish, more as Sri Krishna of up and down. Gokul. Yeah. Gokul and, and gopis and gopas and uh, like that. Yes, Maharaj. In general, with respect to the bhakti songs, and uh, Krishna and Vrindavan is much more glorified and sung about than Krishna in Dwarka. I don't think it's not just in Pandarpur, but overall, even, even if you see the Gaudiya Vaishnava songs or in general the bhakti songs, they are much more about Krishna and Vrindavan than Krishna and Dwarka. Yeah, so our, our Gaudiya Vaishnav, our emphasis is on Rajendra Nandan, and as, as you said, yeah, that is also observed in many, many Krishna temples or Dwarkadish temples or Vishnu temples also. They'll sing glories of Krishna. <laughs> there is a, even Ram or Vishnu or Yes. Or Guru Ayur, uh, Appa, or Guru Ayur, or... Yes, Maharaj. So, now, you mentioned about uh, being welcomed by the... Padhyatra being welcomed uh, across the country in many places. So, in general, in the heartland of Maharashtra, how much of the bhakti culture which was there from the time of Tukaram Maharaj and before, after, how much is it still there? Is it getting lost and uh, how is the Krishna Conscious Movement uh, uh, helping in revive that? More in the rural parts, we have centers prominently in the, in the cities, but in the more internal parts of the country or the state, how is it Maharaj overall? Well, age of Kali is here. And uh, getting more active, and uh, everyone is being engulfed, including Maharashtrians, in it. Uh, and as a result, you know, the, uh, the irreligion, Yatra Adharma Chatur Vidha. Bhagavatam said, you could, you Kali could reside in four places. And that is where there is Yutam Panam Sunastriya. Where there is Yutam, where there is a gambling. Yes, that is for you, O Kali. This is your residence. Mm. Where there is a drinking, intoxication, where there is illicit sex, Triya, and where there is what is the remaining? Uh, meat eating. Meat eating, yeah. yeah. So these things are practicing the Western culture and uh, part of that culture is 
the mall culture and shopping and eating and five star hotel culture and uh, this and that uh, so people are indulging Maharashtrians are indulging in these things there is to be Zunka Bhakar at the time of Tukaram, now is a mutton bakri. Huh? That's how they advertise. <laughs> oh. Not only bakri, bakri is a Maharashtrian yeah. bread or chapati. Yes. So they used to eat that with bhaji bakri or zunka bakri, vegetable and that bakri, but now mutton bakri. Uh, I was not far from Kolhapur. Uh, I was on the way to Belgaum and there's a festival called Mutton Mutton also. Mutton also. Oh my God. The festival. Of, and, and like that, you, you know, uh, all these things are, they go on and the union worker is, they, they have a, this mala around their neck. When they want to eat meat or eggs, they take off and uh, put that mala away. They eat and then mala back again. Oh, God. So, uh, this is very common chewing tobacco for drinking. This also happens on during uh, dindis and uh, this and that. Of course, the worst thing happened in other parts of the world. Yeah, of course. Well, and, uh, maybe Maharashtians are not that bad. But in the middle of Kirtan, on Ekadasi, all night Kirtan, Bhajan in Maharashtra, they, they will just maybe drink tea. But I have seen in Bengal, during our Padhyatra and the middle of Kirtan, or they'll stop in Kirtan, then they'll they will string uh, have a drink, uh, drink, and also uh, ganja or marijuana. They will smoke, and then uh, Kirtan again. So uh, I would say, you know the. Uh, there are 10 offenses against the holy holy name. The whole world is chanting the holy names, Indians, Hindus, Maharashtrians, chanting bhajans and kirtan. But the 10 offenses against the holy name, they are not aware. They are there eternally in Padma Puran. But our Gaudiya Vaishnavas have now made them popular or they're taught in our Gaudiya Vaishnav. These are the 10 offenses against the holy name when we are given initiation in the Hare Krishna movement. We are reminded what those 10 offenses are. Hmm. But the Maharashtrian Bhajan, Kirtan, chanters and singers, either they know those or they, of course, follow those fences. So that's uh, mm. Yeah, it's this is not there because of this these offenses. So the four regulatory principles are not followed. No meat eating, no intoxication, no necessary, no gambling, and these ten offenses. Mm. Uh, I think this is this is unfortunate everywhere. In Pakistan's Thakur's biography, it is mentioned that you know during his times there would be Bengalis who would have bead bag in one hand and they would go to the fish market and bring fish back with the other hand. So that is uh, unfortunate. Yes, Maharaj. As you are quoting many, uh, I'm moving on to the next point. You are quoting many sweet lines from Maharashtrian bhajans and songs. So now these have, for every culture, they have a special appeal. 
say for maharashtrians there will be appeal of maharashtrian songs say and if we go to north india then we have their people are very much into ramcharit manas and dohas of tulsidas so there is a special connect and there is a special you could say almost intimacy when bhakti is uh, phrased in the vernacular language in the language which people have grown up in so in our outreach when we are representatives of the gaudiya vaishnav tradition and you are also preaching in maharashtra so how much do you uh, utilize or integrate the Ma- marathi bhakti songs and bhakti expressions in your outreach uh, hi i wish i could do more <laughs> uh i i realize this significance of it now uh, our our gaudi vaishnava charya narottam das thakur and bhakti na thakur uh and lochan das thakur and many other thakurs and mahasharas have mm-hmm. compiled songs which are full of philosophy of Krishna consciousness or Gaudi Vaishnavism or even Leela's, the Leela Kirtans, Rup Kirtan, Nam Kirtan, Dham Kirtan, Nimai Sanyas, Leela Kirtan. So when it is in your, your local language or your mother, mother tongue, mm. then uh, you know it is uh, it was follow and digest and assimilate that more easily so uh, and uh, hope others said that the songs of bhakti vinod thakur and narottam das thakur they are they are not different from vedas they are vedas otherwise to grasp grasp the vedas is of the sanskrit language and the, the sutra form and uh, so these acharyas kindly uh, they compose uh, you know vernacular or local regional languages so take full advantage of these arrangements uh but then some some difficulties then these compilations also are 300 700 year old and then language of the words used those days are not the same as uh, these days and then again grasping understanding become a bit, a bit difficult mm. so uh Uh, uh, there are, besides myself, there are other other devotees. We have in Maharashtra. They are quite well versed with the abhangas, especially the param abhangas. They are memorized or they they speak, mm. explain. Uh, I do some. Some of them are. Mm. part of my vocabulary or yes maharaj so if if i understand right you said three things that first uh, that our tradition has itself done that in the form of uh, the songs of our acharya narottam das thakur bhakti thakur lochan das thakur so in that sense it's very much uh, a part of our tradition to say present a sanskrit message in the in the vernacular languages and then you are saying that there are some devotees who are also doing it with respect to tukaram maharaja bangas and other things and that can be done but the challenge is that it is it is a little old english and you said you wish you would like to do more is it that it is just a matter of logistics or is it that because we are a part of a particular tradition so there are limits to how much we can uh, we can take resources from other traditions or it's just more logistical well 
a southern tradition uh, and even amongst that other other tradition some is closer to our tradition gaudiya vaishnava tradition but some things maybe is not so close or so uh, uh well matching our philosophy and tradition and the culture uh, yes there's there's all yeah so we have to be, we have to be aware of those karma karn jnana karn kevala vishera bhan or mm. or artha karam mara says uh, advaita jivani na ko maja kani the vani the talk or songs or whatever if it has a it is changed with the advait this uh, non dual or nirakar nirgun advaitvad then i have nothing to do with this advaita jivani na ko maja kani so uh, i'm sure there is some advaitvani और निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारी ने अद्वैतवाद शून्यवाद और भौतिकवाद और साम्यवाद और दिसवाद वाद विवाद ऑल दिस इज गेट्स मिक्स्ड एंड इट बिकम्स देन द सॉन्ग और दो अभंग मिश्र कर्म मिश्र और ज्ञान मिश्र और योग मिश्र bhakti but our principle is harir naam harir naam harir naam eva kevalam kalau nasteva 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 gati ranyatha why is it said three times so explanation is why no asti but not not by karma there is one nasteva not by jnana there is another nasteva not by yoga there is another nasteva so uh, these things are Could be there, so you have to also be cautious, careful. So that could be a reason. To, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry, as they say. Now, so just stay away. Okay? And uh, okay. Mm. It's some. Sometimes I find it a little uh, paradoxical or ironical that. sometimes in our outreach we can quote western authors we may quote something from say <clears throat> shakespeare or byron or somebody like that but sometimes we be, we have to be you could say almost hyper cautious about quoting someone from the indian tradition itself so although they might be much more spiritual so it's like the ideological differences may be there but if we consider uh, the lifestyles of some of the western te- western people that we quote You know, just to convey some, to introduce some philosophical point to new people, or to uh, to to say show how something is relevant, not something very strange or alien. So, in one sense, if there is wisdom, uh, and if that can help us uh, to convey to connect people with Krishna's wisdom, then does the source matter that much? Because it's not that we are recommending that source to people. We're just saying you are familiar with this. and you know this is similar point and then this is what well you know uh, shankaracharya he propagated this impersonalism yes so we stay away and uh, etane mahaprabhu was warned mayavad bhashya sunile hoyla sarvanash yeah But when same Shankara Charya, he talks of Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam, Bhaja Mudha Mate, nahi nahi, Raksha, that one. Really, really go for it. He is Advait Vadi and all that. Yeah. Here he's speaking, you know, beneficial speaking the truth. Bhaja Govindam, you know, you fool. Or into this study of grammar and. Uh, But uh, what about worshiping Govinda? 
or his uh, that whole Vajra Govindam in a series of verses that's told as a book called Vajra Govindam. Yes, sir. and uh, that talks of Vairagya, the renunciation, and there, there we are together with. We have we have no no issues with Shankaracharya's Vajra Govindam and those mm. those songs, or when he says Bala Vasta Krida Sakta, yeah, Yuva Vasta Taruni Rakta, Vridha Vasta Chinta Magna. Uh, and uh, when are you going to worship the Lord? When you are a child, you are going to be playing, and young man, you are going to be running after young woman. And uh, when you are old, you are going to be absorbed in your anxieties, ridden person. You are going to become. So where is your time for the Lord? So uh, uh, we we have. We welcome this statement of Shankaracharya. So, so it depends. Even, or you know, he, <laughs> Shankaracharya comes to Pandarpur, and he has a darshan of Vital, and uh, he uh, spontaneously composes Pandranga Astakam, Parabrahmalingam, Bhaji Pandurangam, Parabrahmalingam, Bhaji Pandurangam. Great. Shankaracharya ki. <laughs> this Bhaja Pandurangam. Worship Panduranga. What kind of Panduranga? Parabrahma Lingam. Lingam is just a form. Parabrahma Lingam. Parabrahma Param Dhamma. Like the same thing is talking. What Arjun said to Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. So, and then he's glorifying Panduranga to his heart's content. So we could do some pick, picking and choosing from mm -hmm. even what this yeah, other sampradaya or saints or Mahatmas have written or spoken. Yes, Maharaj. So you mentioned also that's that's a very important point about selecting carefully. And you also mentioned that say, something which is in a few hundred year old Marathi language, its meaning may not be clear or it may not be that accessible. So do we also have a living bhakti tradition right now in Maharashtra, whether within our movement or outside, that there are even today people composing uh, bhakti songs and uh, bhakti, bhakti poetry. Is it happening now also? Means as a part of the living tradition, in the local languages, is something like that happening or not much? Yeah, maybe somewhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's nothing uh, dominating the Maharashtrian scene or. Yeah. We don't. Uh, in general, I think. In the last 100, 150 years, in general, poetry itself has been going down all over the world. Not much great poem poetry has been composed. I guess that's a part of yeah, it. We have to revive our, you know, Gaudiya Vaishnav mm. consciousness, Krishna consciousness here. And now we have Chaitanya Charitamrit in Marathi and Bhagavatam in Marathi and Bhagavad Gita Yatharu Dachiyatasi in Marathi. So I think this is. Let Maharashtrians now you know, go for it, yes. grab it, yes, drink it, digest it, assimilate it. So, uh, so they should take full advantage of what is being made available by Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I think Maharashtra is waiting. India is waiting, whole world is waiting for Gauranga Mahaprabhu's special benediction and uh, International Society for Krishna Consciousness is here to deliver that uh, benediction in the form of chanting 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे एंड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फिलर प्रोपर्स बुक्स एंड वी हैव टेंपल्स एंड दर्शन्स एंड फेस्टिवल्स एंड प्रसादम सो दिस इज दिस इज कंप्लीट एंड द टॉप नॉट सो आई थिंक that world be is just happy with this or maharashtra india the world be happy with that yes ma'am shri krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu ki yeah ram vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam and yes ma'am shri prabhu pad ki jai yes ma'am shri krishna woman he has established this founded this international society for krishna consciousness and uh let us share that krishna consciousness with the rest of the world yes the best of our ability yes my like it's so true so my uh usually toward the end of the uh, one thing i yeah i need to uh, stop now or very soon because i have yes my like we'll almost finish so usually toward the end of the podcast i quickly summarize what was discussed and then maybe if you want to your concluding message we can do that and we'll stop i think i gave my concluding oh, okay. just now i i was winding up <laughs> okay But so your turn you you could so mara today we discussed about the universal and regional aspects of bhakti and you started with your journey how You know, your spiritual search was such that you, know, you it it took you beyond any cultural differences and you found what your soul was longing for in prabhupad's movement and prabhupad service and then we discussed about how how in maharashtra from the time when there was just one center in mumbai to now dozens of centers and thousands and thousands millions of books being distributed we said the marathi marathi gita is among the top vernacular languages gita being distributed so it's been a series of spectacular achievements and then we discussed about how how we are becoming accepted earlier we thought of as maybe cia or some people who have come from abroad to again gain control but uh, now you said two three significant landmarks how our devotees in 84 were welcomed by in pandarpur and then how you were appointed you were appointed as a, accepted as a mahant in the kumbh mela and how in most temples we are welcome especially of course in pandarpur it's very intimate so it's it's we are not only being accepted but we are also being respected in the mainstream in the mainstream of uh, the india's religious landscape except of course for jagannath puri and then we discuss also about how in pandarpur there is the whole worship of krishna so it's although technically or officially is krishna in dwar uh, is dwarkadish but the mood is of krishna and vrindavan very much and then you mentioned also about how with your research you are highlighting this more and more and we talked about the the local expressions of bhakti and say quoting from local sources if it is appropriate we can carefully do that and there is a special enrichment and that's why our saints have also our acharyas also sung in the local languages like bengali uh, the which prabhupada said is non different from the vedas and you also concluded by saying how the message of bhakti is now being made available by shri prabhupad's movement lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy and what lord chaitanya mahaprabhu prophesied this is going to be a global phenomena it is already manifesting across the world and we can it is also manifesting in maharashtra and we can play our part do our best to share this uh, treasure and take it forward so is there anything you would like to add or conclude maharaj so Uh, thank you for this opportunity chaitanya charan prabhu and uh, it was thank nice to talking to you and uh, i look forward to oh it would <laughs> it would be events honor maharaj okay. your association thank awesome. you very much so much more. for your time and your sharing your not just your experience and your wisdom but through all that you are saying i could sense your devotion pouring out and i feel not just illumined but also enriched and i'm sure the audience will also have that experience
So I'm immensely grateful to you, Maharaj, for sparing your time and being here on the Monks podcast. Please, Zolan Sloknath Swami Maharaj ki jai. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.